Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Pete Robertson. Hello, my buddy, old friend, old personal you. Oh, you. Come yeah. on, Mac Daddy. What's going on? A lot. Hey, What's you know what this you? week is? What? It's my 20th wedding anniversary. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Are you going to go do anything? Yeah, well. You're going to be like romantic? By the time people hear this, I will have gotten back from a second honeymoon with my wife. and taken her to see what? Carrie Underwood and going to see a Cirque show. Wow. And uh, her her favorite place in uh, in Vegas is watching the Bellagio Fountains. So That's I got so her a pretty. room facing the fountain. So wow. we're going to have we're going to have a good time. Got some shows set up. Going to eat some good food. And uh, you know what else happens? What? I turned 55. Can you believe wow. it? You're yeah. like young. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a young 55. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that possible? Young 55? It is. I remember when 55 seemed ancient. Now it seems very young. No, and you look good. Except what? for all those wrinkles on your eyes. I know. What? I, you've been picking on me all week about yeah, you that. You're like, got me self-conscious <laughs> about my wrinkles. <laughs> You know, it's crazy because I look in the mirror and I don't see 55. No. In fact, until I, they look at your wrinkles. Well, I go I go on social media and I see and oh man, I'm going to I'm probably going to regret this, but I see these people that I went to high school with. Yeah. And I'm like, they're so old. You look good. <laughs> There you go. You look good. Oh, uh, you're so funny. That's exciting. Speaking of social media, what? You, you know, all this this uproar about this uh, this new bill passed in Florida. Yeah. Man, I just I just had to share that. Uh, you know, just read the bill. Yeah. <laughs> just read the bill. Yeah. You, there's lies on both sides, and everybody's spinning it the way they want it. You know, it's a seven page bill. Just read it. Yeah. To our American audience, we're talking about this Florida bill that was passed that they're calling it. Uh, Don't say gay. Uh, bill and um, I couldn't find that word in there anywhere right. in seven pages. Oh, it's not in there. And and the, again, it's it really the the bill in itself is more or less saying that hey, they want to they want to protect the uh, kindergartners to third grade. Yeah, so five from, to eight year olds. Yeah, to be in, being taught uh, you know about sexuality, transgender, and all that. So that was just basically it that they're they're it's not they're saying anti gay. It's not they're saying that they're just saying that they feel like it's best that you don't teach that you know, that all the way going up. So that's kind of where the uproar is. I guess Disney's involved in it and all some of these other big people. Yeah. And that's kind of where some of the crazy spins coming and, from. And, and again, my, our take on this, you know, as riot podcast is we look at it as, you know, if you're a parent, your, your duty and your job is to teach your kid the truth. Yes. The, the truth is the truth will, you know, set them free, but the truth is, is, preach. is whatever. So, Regardless of what the law is going to put at them, regardless what the world's going to offer them, regardless of the influence or whatever, ultimately we are to influence them the most. Amen. And so we need to raise them up in the ways of the Lord. We need to love on them and trust them and yep. teach them. And so that's ultimately it. So when they see bills or when they see, hear things in school or when they hear things around, they've already heard the truth so much in the home that they can be able to process that and make the decision for themselves. So that's kind of raise them up in the way they should go, huh? That's it. That's it. All right, let's get going, man. We got a we got a amazing show today. Yeah, we have a special guest on our show today, Pete. Yes, and, we do. Uh, I think that uh, it would be perfect if you would introduce him. Yeah. So um, I just recently, and, and if many of you know that I'm in India a lot, if you've been listening to our show for some time, and um, I'm connected with quite a few pastors there, and I'm connected with. Um, um, just some business aspects and things that are going on in India. But um, so my heart has always been for the, the Indian people and I've really uh, connected with them. And I just got recently met this pastor there, Pastor Emmanuel. And as he was going ahead and sharing with me his story and um, in the persecution that he's experienced, I thought, man, our audience really would be wise to hear this, to yeah. do this. Because last time I was in India, which was a couple years of right before COVID, Hit. I was. Um, I just talked with some of the pastors, and they were telling me that they were in the hospital, or they were even arrested. Sometimes they get arrested, and I was talking to what pastor was. His church was burnt down um, in the north region, and that he was facing persecution. So I knew that it was becoming more and more. Um, but it's it seems to be really ramping up, and so I thought it would be awesome to have Pastor Emmanuel uh, from India on our on our show today. Welcome, Pastor Thank Emmanuel. You. Glad, glad you. you're Welcome. here. Thank you, Pastor Bob, and thank you, Pastor Pete, for inviting me. I'm such a honor to be with you all on the show this morning. You look good, too, man. You got some <laughs> bright orange going, man. It just makes your face shine, and you're yeah. just looking sharp. <laughs> that smile, Pete. Yeah, and he has, look at those pearly white teeth. I know, and stuff. I'm jealous. 
I'll tell I, I mean, the, the, my teeth looks white because of my color, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, well, I'm just so, we're just so honored that you're here, and yeah. um, we would just love to, you know, if you want to just share a little bit about yourself, and I mean. Let's just let me just go ahead and give this disclaimer to our audience now is we're going to keep some things at bay. We're not going to give exactly some of his ministries. He's involved in a lot of different ministries that are in India. Um, and the reason why is because they, he is censored. Um, there are certain things that, uh, you know, from a governmental standpoint or from people that uh, it can get back on him. And as you hear his story, as it unfolds, um, you'll understand why. But if you do want to connect with him or you do want to support his ministry, you would just contact us. We will get you in contact with him and, and that would be the best way. But uh, if you're listening and God does touch your heart and God does, um, you know, share with you that this is something that you want to do, please get in contact with us so that we can do it. But before we do that, so I just wanted to, if you can briefly maybe share a little bit, Pastor Emmanuel, about what you're doing and without, you know, jeopardizing anything and in, in, in what's going on, you're married and, and tell all about that. Well, uh, thank you, Pastor P, for the invitation. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Emmanuel. I come from a south part of India where, uh, from the state of Andhra Pradesh, well, uh, from the year of 2011, I've been involved in ministries in various aspects. Like we are involved in crusades and we are involved in uh, homeless ministries. We are involved mm -hmm. in orphanages ministries that we take care of. And God have enabled us to start almost 15 churches in and around Andhra Pradesh where I'm working for. And uh, I'm recently married a year ago. Oh, God wow. gave me a blessed woman of God. She's very beautiful. I saw she pictures. Is. Yeah. <laughs> she is. So I don't show to. I don't show a picture of her. Uh, which I don't look good than that. You know? <laughs> I want to make sure that I looks good. She makes you look good. Yeah. yeah. So, but That's... I really praise God for giving such a great, uh, wonderful woman of God in my life, Man. and I'm really happy about that. That's exciting. Amen. So, so as we started talked about before, we're gonna we're gonna talk about persecution and, mm -hmm. and the overall picture of this um, for, for this show is that there's persecution going on everywhere. There's there's persecution here in America. There's persecution in India. There's persecution all over. And in the bottom line in all of this, I think is what we're trying to get across is that we still want to be bold in our faith. We don't want to fear man. We want to trust God in all of this. And um, we want to continue to love people in spite of people. People are filled with hate. There's a there's people that are filled with uh, just they just hate Jesus. They hate God. Period. Hmm. And but Jesus loves them. Jesus hmm. died for them. And so the ultimate goal is that we want to be able to show that in spite of what's going on in our circumstances and our world around us, we want to continue to pursue to love people. We want to continue to not be ashamed or be afraid of sharing our faith with people. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. So Bob, you want to go ahead and just share our opening statement. Let's put it in perspective and then we'll start asking and talking about it. Yeah. And, and Pete, honestly, before we even do that, let's, let's open up in prayer. Go for Amen. it. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we just love you. We trust you. We, we completely give you this show today. I ask you to be with our listeners as, as we share these stories of persecution as we dive into your holy word lord i just pray that uh, uh your voice would be heard loud and clear across these airwaves across the the video platforms father use it in a mighty way uh, we love you and we give you this show now in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. 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 so we're going to call this show per persecuted christian shares his story so if you're looking for it on youtube that would be uh, one way you could search it let's let's speak, let's start by reading john 15 okay. 19 and 20 it says if you were the world the world would love you as its own but because you are not of the world but i choose you out of the world therefore the world hates you hmm. remember the word that i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me they will also persecute you mm. if they keep my word they will also keep yours so today we're going to talk about uh, the persecuted church and it may be surprising but christian persecution around the world is one of the biggest human rights issue of our era it happens everywhere and christians suffer because of their faith while christian persecution takes many forms it is defined as any hostility experienced as a result of identification with jesus christ yeah bottom line from Sudan to Russia, from Nigeria to North Korea, from Colombia to India, followers of Christianity are targeted for their faith. They are attacked. 
They are discriminated against at work and at school. They risk, they risk sexual violence, torture, arrest, and much more. Today, we get to talk to Pastor Emmanuel, who you've already heard from, coming from India, and he's going to share some of his stories about being persecuted and tortured so badly that he almost died. So, yes, welcome. So, you know, I, I thought it might be great, Pastor Emmanuel, if we went ahead. I know you shared with me one of your stories, and let's just start it this way, and then we're going to just, we'll follow it down. But why don't you tell us the story about Miramar? So what happened when you went to Miramar, and, and kind of right. share what uh, took place there? I'll do that. <clears throat> well, in the year of 2019, God woke me up, and I could hear a voice calling me to go to a place called Yangon. I never heard about that. I don't know where it is from. I was seeing that it should be a village nearby. So I asked all my friends and I could not get any help from anybody. I even typed in Google, but because of the spelling mistake that I did, even Google did not help. <laughs> but praise God for the microphone option in Google, you know. So I just clicked on it, popped up and it said Yangon. And it took me to this beautiful city from Myanmar. I don't know anybody from Myanmar, never been there. How far is that from your house? Uh, well, from... You went uh, on the train? From Hyderabad. No, I need to fly. Oh, yeah. Because it is from another country. So yeah, yeah. I need to fly Hyderabad to Calcutta, which is like two hours. Yeah. From Calcutta to Myanmar is, is something around three hours. Oh, okay. It would be around five hours one yeah. side. Okay. It, it costs something like $450 for me to yeah. up and down trip right so uh i took i booked i did book my flight uh, two months earlier i wanted to do something for the community that god wants me to do i tried all that i can i don't want to be detailed in some things that we trained up but we did what god spoke to us to do so finally uh, a month earlier god opened a way for me to find this young man of god pastor john who is a secret christian in yangun mm -hmm. You know, he is a friend of my another friend, and we both got a mutual friend, and we both got connected. He came to pick me up from the airport, and we did a great, wonderful job. And in Myanmar, in this villages, we are not allowed to speak anything about Christianity because they respect Buddhist government. I mean, Buddhist religion. Was he with the Burmese, the Burma? It used to be. Yeah. It used to be. It used to be. Yeah. And. Um, Buddhist religion is good. Yeah. I mean, it's a good religion though, but they believe something that is not really truth. I mean, right. it's up to them. They have that freedom to do that. When you say good, you mean like peaceful or? Yeah, it is peaceful. Okay. It is peaceful. And uh, I'm not allowed to speak. So what, how the way that we selected is, we need to speak about Indian culture. So we named every meeting that we went as cultural festival. So we speak about Indian culture. From there, I'll be going to Jewish culture where I introduced Jesus. Yeah. So I started telling about miracles of Jesus. I tell telling of signs of Jesus. And I used to give altar call. If you wanted to know more about him, stay back. Other, than, other people can leave. And I worked on them. And praise God, in 13 days, it's in two weeks of time, God helped us to baptize 135 people. Wow. Oh. 135 people yeah and we saw many miracles like we saw deaf seeing you know yeah. i mean deaf hearing blind seeing lame walking yeah. we saw right miracles right before people yeah so that made uh easy for us to convince people that jesus is the lord mm. those days and there was just two days left uh, pastor p you know just two days we were very excited because in two days i'm gonna go back to india you know why i'm excited mm. i'm gonna eat some rice and chicken yeah there you go <laughs> you get some good food yeah <laughs> i'm gonna meet my parents and my church and everything yeah so well i was about to tell to my friend hey i'm excited to go back to india i called to my my mom and said mom i'll be there on some time so i want you to cook this dish for me and everybody are excited so there was just this two days left and my friend john came up and said brother brother Emmanuel, today the village we're going is a little difficult beware of that mm. i said man we are okay we got I mean, we got experience talking yeah. to people, yeah. so that should be fine. He said, no, this is something, a little danger, you be careful. So I was like, okay. We went to the village by at morning, like 9.30, 9.35 something. We got meeting started at 10 o'clock. We, we hired a community hall in that. Uh, I don't want to say the village names where we did that, but we, di we did uh, hire a small community hall where people gathered, and there were like 45 to 50 people sitting right before me. I started about uh, gospel, about 
I mean, I started about Indian culture from there. I've been to Jewish culture. I started telling the miracle of Jesus about dead Lazarus coming to life. Hmm. I started the power of God. And I started miracles uh, telling about that. Once I said the name Jesus, you know, there was this uh, 37 to 40 years Buddhist guru sitting right before me with his followers. All of a sudden he was shouting, he was screaming, and I know he have come to destroy the meeting. I know he have come to disturb the meeting. So my volunteers went to ask him some help and say, hey, would you mind please be calm because we're going to be done in 20, 30 minutes. He was not hearing to them. He was shouting. He wanted to jump. He wanted to come out of the stage, uh, come on to the stage and speak something. So I said, like, he's uncontrollable. So there's nothing that we can do. Let's give the mic, bring him up. So he came to the uh, stage very fast. And the moment when he came to the stage, he, he pulled the microphone my, from my hand. Mm -hmm. The moment he hold, he, he, he hold the mic, he was, he, f he fell onto the knees with tears and he said, I need this Jesus. Wow. Wait a minute. It's not easy for a Buddhist guru yeah. to believe Jesus. Yeah. And I can't believe that. Yeah. And I might think it's might be a prank or it might be something, uh, a negative sign for me. Hmm. So I said, brother, <coughs> what is happening? You can't tell that easy. And he's still crying and crying, crying. I said, hey. Do not worry what happened. He said, I am 37 years old. For the first time in my life, I started hearing. I was born deaf, but God healed me. Wow. And the wow. first word that I heard is Jesus. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> wow. And that one miracle brought 35 people into baptism. Wow. Just one miracle. Yeah. Just one miracle. So we were very happy about that and we were celebrating and uh, we were about to give the altar call and uh, it's like five minutes more before we complete the meeting. The followers of this Buddhist guru have been, went back and brought like 15, 20 young people to, to beat me very badly. Mm. They shown up all of a sudden with stakes and with rods and they came up to the stage. They broke all the chairs and they broke my PS system and they beat me very badly, very badly. I mean, they broke my hands back. They broke my legs back and they punched my stomach. I mean, I still have these cesarean marks on my body and, you know, I was about to put to death and I could not breathe. I was like, <sighs> like that. I was breathing with my mouth. And they put me facing to the ground, like four feet or three feet high. And one of the young person shouted, telling them, hey, nobody from this place are allowed to go out until we speak to this, this person. And he have asked me two questions to tell. And if I say that, I'll be free from that. The first question is, tell Jesus is not the Lord. And second thing is, tell to people, everything that you said here is lies. Mm. Let me be open with the people who are watching this this morning, you know. I'm on my bed of death. I know the pain. I know the hurt that I'm going through. Yeah. I know I'm not going to be back any anytime in India. I'm, I'm, I'm with tears. I'm crying. My body could not bear even a single pain anymore because it's, it's worse than that I can explain. Yeah. It's easy to talk in a comfortable place like this in front of a camera and I can tell, but it's hard. Yeah. So my body says, hey, there's nobody from your church there. there. There's nobody from your church leadership. There's nobody that you know them. Just tell Jesus is not the Lord and go back to India. You have a lot of things to do in India. Mm. And Saturn started telling the day, hey, God asked you to use some wisdom. Mm. Do that. Mm. Just agree, Jesus is not the Lord. Yeah. And I was convinced by that because the pain that I'm going through. But while I just look into the people, what about that 35 people who came to Christ? Yeah. Man, I've been beaten up. I mm. was put to death. Is in just for a second. Then I thought, like, Lord, what they will do, the greatest thing that they can do is kill me. Yeah. I'm okay with that because it's better to die instead of bearing that pain. 
I was about to say Jesus is not the Lord but you know I was very clearly said hey Jesus loves you. Mm. The moment when I said that Pastor Payne and Pastor Bob they pulled me to the ground. Four of them have squashed me with the ha- with the legs on my neck and I was unconscious. They thought I'm dead and mm. they left. Mm. This 30 feet, 35 people who got who came to forward for the baptism they saw my boldness for Christ and they they believed and they stood for that and they took me to the hospital I said no just give me some painkillers I want to go back to India and I went back to India I went for the checkup and they said there were three three nerves three veins that were broken your ribs and, yeah yeah and uh, not 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 bones uh three veins oh, what okay. do you call uh three uh, nerves yeah three nerves have been broken and mm. everywhere it is blood mm. and got infected because it's already two days yeah once i go to hospital and there were like four doctors have oper- have done surgery of nine long hours mm. where i was on ventilator mm. in an emergency room where i don't know whether i'll be alive or not yeah you know sometimes it feels me to think like this person why do i need this See I have a very good church of 150 people coming to me and they can take care of my family very well. I don't need to go into the villages like this. Not everybody does that. But I tell you there is a purpose. Now we have a blessed church in Yangon where 150 people are coming. That's exciting. And worshiping. Yeah. Yeah. Worshiping. I have a I met a I met a, f- a friend of mine his uh, name is Dave Eubank mm-hmm. and he's in he's in Myanmar right now. Wow. Yeah, he works with a organization called the Free Burma Rangers. Uh-huh. And he's part of the persecuted church that's wow. there. Yeah, and he deals with that. But that's it's pretty really cool. Awesome. Yeah, he tells a little bit of the same testimony. Wow. Of a lot of people in that area are giving wow. their life to the Lord. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's the first one. How do you follow a story like that? Yeah, well, I mean, again, that's it's so amazing. There there's many that he has, but it's it's Well, I have 11 surgeries on my body. just because of the persecution out of 11 6 to 7 times i'm put to death like the above i said so but i mean what we saw in this this staff story is again they they you know jesus the word jesus was the healer mm-hmm. jesus is mm-hmm. the savior so Amen. we we heard that and we heard that they don't want jesus proclaimed so this is the world right so we're here to take back land but there's God Satan or the enemy does not want Jesus's name proclaimed. And so they wanted him to stop because they started they saw with their own eyes the testimony of what Jesus was doing around them. And they saw that Jesus was the one that was transforming. Jesus was the one that's changing. Mm-hmm. And so in Pastor Emmanuel's, you know, heart or mind, he's in his heart he's like, "Well, he's challenging. Well, either I believe this or I don't." Yeah. And and the spirit of God came upon him. So again, it's it's you know in the moment of despair in the moment of time when as a child of god god will never leave you nor forsake you Amen. god will empower you and god will be faithful and in that moment of time god gave him the words and the wisdom to say jesus loves you mm. and and as jesus was hung in on the cross and he looked down he says father forgive them for they know not what they do but pastor amani was saying the exact same thing he was challenged he was stretched he wanted to give up he wanted to throw in the towel but greater see that's in you than he that's in this world amen, and God amen. overcome. And so that's what we heard in that th- thought. That's cool. It's just just powerful. I mean the enemy knows how powerful the name of Jesus is. Mm-hmm. I mean what was their one request to you is just say it's not true, right? Yeah. They wanted you to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say it's not true because even even the demons, even the enemy knows how powerful that name yes, is. And let yes. me let me read something to you real quick. Yeah. Um this is from Open Doors. It said last year over 340 million Christians are living in places where they experience high levels of persecution and discrimination. 4761 Christians were killed for their faith. 4488 churches and other buildings other Christian buildings were attacked 4277 believers were detained without trial arrested sentenced or imprisoned this is just over the last year yeah and and that and that i um, i promise that uh those numbers are low because it, i'm i'm sure in china there's no way they're going to be getting no those way they reports. can document them yeah. there's no way and in china it's probably even worse than that Um but with that Pastor Emmanuel let's let's talk about this. So it's it's bad and it's out there. And so again our listeners if you're listening to this 
um, the world needs Jesus. Mm -hmm. The world needs his love. He, yeah. And Jesus does love them. Mm -hmm. And and as as a follower of Christ, as we read at the beginning in First John 14 or 15, um, it, they first hated him. Yeah. And they first persecuted him. Mm -hmm. And if they persecuted him, then they're going to persecute you. Mm -hmm. And But that doesn't give us uh, an excuse not to share our faith mm -hmm. and, and to share the truth. So why don't you go ahead and let's go ahead and move to another story and share that. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But what, give us an, give us the other doozy one or the big one that you have. There. Okay. Uh, well, I've been mean, uh, to a village in the Andhra, in the, in the state of mind where I'm working with. So... It was a village where it is Hindu dominated area. Yeah. Well, I also want to do, I want to, I also want to let you know, um, I don't tell the religion of Hindu is that wrong or, I mean, I don't tell they are, they are, they are very rough, rude and thing. They love people too. Yes. I don't talk anything against them. They are good people too. But sometimes some people, I could, I could not blame all the religion. But some people from that does the does the persecution too. Yeah. I love Hindu people. I, I respect their views. I honor them. I, I mean, it's my responsibility to take care of them and I love them. But some people in the name of Hinduism, they does the persecution. So I've been to this village in Andhra Pradesh. Generally what we do when we do a crusade, God have kept me a heart for the lost. And my, my, my vision is, you know, get the lost at any cost, no mm. matter how long it is, no matter how hard it is, just go and preach yeah. because there are places that I've been to in the States, in, in India, when I started sharing about Jesus, you know, some people shown up telling that, is he a film actor? So they don't even know the name of Jesus. Huh. They don't even know the name. Oh, wow. So these villages I really wanted to go. Yeah. So from the year of 2015, December, I started this crusade. God helped me to reach more than 350 villages still now in India. Mm. God has blessed us with all the equipments that we have and we are doing all the way. And our goal is to reach even two villages for a month. It's just like that. So we were uh, visiting this village and so let me just share a little bit with our audience. So he, um, Pastor Emmanuel, has his churches. There's about 11 or so churches. He has a lot of other pastors that are a part of his organization. Yes. And one of his main ministries is he packs up his sound system. He packs up the stage. He packs up his chairs. And then he goes into these small villages. And then he just sets it up. And then he just starts inviting people to come to the state, to that area. And then that's where he starts sharing the gospel. And so that's yeah. his heart. So that's what he's talking about. Yeah, we here. go to uh, house to house sharing the gospel tracks before we invite them to a meeting. We work like two, three days there. Then we'll have a crusade and we, sh we share about God's love. And we had a wonderful crusade there. And they were like, if I'm not wrong, the number should be more than like 25 to 30 people have given their lives towards God. Yeah. And we've packed up everything. We baptized them that same night. You know, you might get a question. Do they don't have a baptism discipleship classes? No, because we may not have an opportunity to go back to the villages. Yeah. Right. But we do try if we have an opportunity to, to let them know what baptism is later. Yeah. But, the, for, but our focus is let them be saved with blood of Jesus first. Yeah. And later on, with the intimacy that they have, they will be knowing what Christ is, what Christianity is. That's what we believe because we may not allow it into the villages again once we've done the crusade. Right. So we will be packed right away. The crusade is done. We'll be on on the wheels because we don't want to be there. Yeah. It's a problem. So we 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 wind up the crusade. We 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 packed up everything. So we we're going on the way, and we saw a goat was struck in a bushes. So we wanted to rescue it. Yeah. I don't know that was a plan. Yeah. So I got down. And uh, to rescue it, immediately people from the trees and around fall down, I mean, jumped down and holded me and tied me immediately in my hands and beat at me and spitted at me. And they made me like, you know, bleeding all the way my body. They took, a, they took you know, you can see the knives, the, the blade, the blade stripes on my body. You know, they took, I mean, they just wrapped on my body as I'm bleeding. And you know, 
and like 10 15 minutes later there was this what do you call the panchayati raj or uh, the head of the village have come yeah and midst of them in midst of him all these people tied me to a tree they tore my clothes i'm naked and they pour a gasoline on me and they try to lit me light you on fire you know what god did brothers they tried almost seven to eight match boxes not even a single match got fire mm. and if a mastic got fired you viewers are lucky you don't need to hear me today mm -hmm. you know and i it just makes me think of you know the verse that says no weapons will be formed against you amen and, I, and, and for me i used to i watched a video years back uh, a, a african missionary was about to get shot but the gun does not work i i did not believe that yeah so hey all these are like man-made things yeah but when i saw that i said lord you are true yeah see not one match box it's like more than seven eight and all of them got scared when none of the match box is lighting up mm. and they let me free mm -hmm. and i came back it took it took some time for me to get all right in my in my health but you know i got an opportunity to go back again to share the testimony to the yeah. village yeah. and now we have a church there too you know, one of the things that I want, because I've been to India many times and every time I've always had trouble teaching. So we've done the, we've done the, the, the crusades. Uh -huh. We've had, you know, we've had a lot, thousands of people come and, and so forth. And I would teach and, and so forth, but I always felt like a heavy weight there yeah. a lot. And one of the things I experienced uh, a lot is, is demon possession. There's a yes, lot of demons, yes, especially yes. in the villages, especially yes. in the, yeah. in those areas, a lot of illiteracy, yeah. a lot of that, that goes on. And, um, and I know with that, there's also a lot of evil that's, that in, in, enrages people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, you know, what you're experiencing is a, is a, as on a, on a greater level kind of than what's mm -hmm. here. Here, I feel like we don't get it as much like that. We don't see demon possession that much at all. And, well, uh, when you, as you're talking about demon possessing deliverance, let me share your story. Yeah. We have a church in a place called Vinicon. I can be openly telling about that because that's not a big deal. Yeah. That's a village. It's a small village where 120 to 130 families live on, but not everybody comes to the Christ. But a, every once in a month we go there. To do a meeting a street meeting i don't call it a crusade because we does it on the street like 60 70 people shows up you know what pastor p i mean the meeting will be over by somewhere around 8 30 or 9 o'clock in the evening i'll have a chair on the stage or somewhere around near to the people and it takes four o'clock in the next day morning to pray for everybody yeah just like 60 70 people you know why everybody i touch they are with the demon possessed yeah i've had that oh. i've had that they tear their clothes yeah. they jump they, they have become, weird facials they, it's weird they, stuff they, 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 they make their hair, hair mask. Yeah. they come to, yeah. they come to beat me yep. they come to bite me and i can t i can give you one word i tell you jesus is more powerful than demon yep i was preaching in a sermon in in, in it's not in a village but well, let me conclude the story god helped me to overcome that stuff it then three months like i pray that god delivered next month i come same person same demon hmm. so i took a seven days of fasting prayer seven days of uh, a prayer around the village praise god they are free and we have a church where like 20 30 people comes in there mm -hmm. right now amen so i was preaching in another village and there was this demon possessed woman she was very thin she was very thin if egg comes she might blow up mm. I was leading the worship in midst of worship. She started showing our processness and you know, something like you big persons mm -hmm. are like me, like more than 10 persons trying to hold her. None of them can hold her. Mm -hmm. She was pushing them away. She was, she was releasing yeah. her herself and she's doing all the mess. She brought a child to beat me. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if she touches me here, it is not going to be a good testimony for me. Yeah. I tell you a miracle. None of them can stop. I know she's going to be on stage. She came with a, with a chair like this to beat me. And she was about to touch my shadow. She just fell down and she got delivered. Mm. The reason why I told you is many times we don't think there is no demons. They say it's an action or yeah. something like that. But I tell you, demon is true. But Jesus is bigger than that. Yeah. Amen. If you're called, 
if you are selected if you are chosen if you are anointed anointed breaks the yoke yeah and it does you, for sure god gives you the gift of deliverance to do that too yeah but i do have some problems with that when i do a deliverance ministry as i don't know because i'm an anger i don't know why two to three days i can't sleep of disturbances yeah yeah God. i'm writing a book on deliverance ministry mm-hmm. so this was something that i struggled with you we, we can't sleep like two to three days once we do the deliverance ministry yeah but when we pray when we walk on that god is going to bring you out of it yeah for sure god is going to bring you out of it i've had uh i have testimony with what you were just saying um where there's times and my wife would can testify to this is where i would there would be a prayer i would there would be some sort of deliverance and i would have restless nights and i would be it would come mm-hmm. out on me where i would feel that yeah um i would feel weak at uh-huh. times yeah, and things would take yeah. out of me yeah so that's happened to me many times mm-hmm. um in the demon possession i can testify to that and, and most americans haven't experienced that we did a show a few a little bit back why did demons really hate us um if you're listening to this and you want to know exactly why the demons are doing what they're doing listen to that show um there is a there is a supernatural um spiritual battle that's going on and the last thing that the the enemy wants is for us to take back land he, the last thing he wants is for us for christians to to bring the kingdom of god to land, to the to the earth and every time that someone gives their life to the lord that is when the kingdom of god is being initiated the person gives their life the kingdom of god is at near it's right there in that thing satan no longer has power over it he no longer has control over it he no longer has all that god is in control at yeah. that moment and so what pastor emmanuel is doing is is that uh, another thing that i thought of is when he was talking about uh you know the angels protecting him from being lit up You know that's something that we have to understand that there are times that we might be martyred for mm-hmm. for our faith. That there there will be there are times. I mean it happens every day. We just talked about open doors talking about how many people there actually died. Um so we don't we don't shy away from the death because the Bible says absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we know that when we die we're going to be with Jesus for all eternity. So we don't mm-hmm. fear that. We want to continue to pursue and to love people that but We don't go on our own authority. We go on the authority of God and God says what he says is in that moment of time we don't know if he's going if we're going to be protected like that yeah. or if God if we're going to be that but we're going to still say Jesus loves you. Amen. As you're going down you're still going to say Jesus loves you. We don't know what's going to happen, but in this case miracles do happen if you are faithful. And you are you are a person that's that's bold and witness for your faith and you go and you do God will protect you Amen. and God will guide you and there he your angels are sent there to protect and to you know to to take care of and that's what happened there and so that was exciting any thoughts to that and then we're going to move on to another story I I just get I get hearing these stories just blows me away because we're so sheltered from that in in America you know we think torture is somebody calling us a name on Facebook you know it's it just it just blows me away i'm thinking you're telling that story and i'm thinking about how what steven must have been going through yeah. as he's being stoned yeah. and you Act know seven. there he yeah. is he's just seeing the face of god. You know, he's seeing the uh, face of god right one thing i want to add for this is i was reading about steven one i think when i'm a young like i'm young now too uh like you know when i was like 18s or 17s stephen face was smiling when people yeah, were stoning yeah. i still have a question about it and now i got an answer in my yeah. life amen yeah. so well i mean in stephen's case what i were kind of jealous because as he was going to be dead jesus revealed himself to him so he's actually seeing his face yep. uh-huh. and and it's like it's almost like he said hey it's it's okay it's you're, you know yeah yep. you're coming yep. up with me so uh-huh. all right so we have time for another story so let's go ahead and and talk about another one and uh something that you would you know that's on your heart and mm-hmm. you know so that our audience and then we'll talk about it from there yes um well uh, let me tell you the other story that i faced when uh, i was when i was preaching uh what happens i mean what what is the biggest challenge for us to do the crusades in the villages well this is a very scariest thing that i ever saw there is a village but they have a very bad custom they kill barren women on a full moon day mm. and they think it is a sacrifice for god yeah they goddesses yeah and they worship moon moon god yeah you know 
we have to go there we have to go there yeah. to preach the gospel and so you knew this before you went there so you, i work yeah i work a lot of research before i go to yeah reach. so you knew about this yes yeah and you and still felt god is, telling you to go yes what i heard is all the pastors all the ministers who have been there have not come with mm. life mm. so doop, 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 doop. manual goes it's it's hard <laughs> i tell you it's it's not an did easy did you say they don't come back is that they have not come back yet Wow. They haven't gone there yet. Yeah. Nobody oh, they haven't knows. gone there yet. Okay. No, no, they have gone. And they didn't come they back. They don't they come, didn't back. come back. That's what I thought you said. So they, they, nobody knows what happened. So you they just, just disappeared. So you think that you're going to be able to come back? I, I don't think I'll be able to come back so, either. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, uh, to live as Christ, to die yeah, as gain. That's, right? that's good. Because, see, instead of here <laughs> wow. discussing about, Lord, what should I eat today? McDonald's or Burger King or that? <laughs> this, it's better to be with him. Somebody. I'd like to go to this town that you're talking about next time in India. A hot for welcome, but yeah. you need to get for permission from your wife, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I would like to go there. All right, go so, ahead, share. You know, that village is a very blessing people. They love, they love people, but they don't love God. I mean, so I stayed there. We worked. We cleaned all the village. We helped them. We we donated some lights for the street from the church, and we became so good to them. And I didn't preach any gospel there, any gospel. So I came up, and second time I got an opportunity again to do a free medical camp towards that village. So then also I did not did any any gospel there. I just went. I came gone and the third time we did some food ministry we took some food and we cooked right before the problem with them is they don't eat if you kick somewhere and if you pack and give mm. we mm. need to cook right before them yeah it was like 100 people in that village and i cooked for them mm. i along with my team we we fed them and at the at the at the time we we were about to feed the food it's not a persecution story. It's a good news. I yeah. mean, I, I showed some persecution story. I want to yeah. share good news no, too. Good. So, because I love my India. I want to yeah. show India all the ways. You know, <laughs> India loves people, you know. So, I, I requested people, if that is okay, if I pray before I serve food. And you know the answer was? It was yes. Awesome. Because every pastor that have been there have not come with life. So I don't want to risk that life. So I went there. I did all. I helped for them. For the first time, we gave street lights. Second, we, we gave some medical camp. And third, we gave food. They said, okay, you can pray. But which God you pray for? I said, I pray for my God. You pray for your God. Sure. So I got an opportunity to introduce who my God is without cursing their God. Mm. I should not. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to tell this, but let me open. A lot of people does this wrong according to me it's none of our business to talk about other gods it's your job is to share the love of god That's amen it. you know you know most of the unnecessary conflict that we face in india a lot of people deal with the wrong stuff like they are deaf god they're like what is the business that you do with them when you have a true god mm -hmm. Why are you wasting your time discussing with that man? You share the love of God with some people that does not know about it. Yeah. That matters a lot. Why pastors have not come back with life where now I have an opportunity to go to that village anytime I want. I can pray with them. I can't share the gospel till, but I can pray with them. People started seeing God, I mean healings. People started, you know, one miracle in that life is that village is completely tortured by a stronghold mm. there were like three four generations living there none of them have a male male born mm. when we entered to that village god started blessed a sister called lakshmi now we named her as a ruth mm. lakshmi blessed with a baby boy mm. after many generations people started seeing the deliverance from the from the from the curse, generational curses mm. and next time when i go i have an opportunity to preach about god where people will not hurt me it's up to them whether they accept it or not my job is to tell there was a god who is a true and his name is jesus mm -hmm. see at the end times that was the main thing people should know the name of jesus it's up to them whether they accept it or not mm. they should know 
but there should not be no villages like i was talking to you the other time when i'm preaching she the woman shown up to me and said hey who this jesus is is a film actor yeah wow my my calling is i don't want to see villages like that before i die yeah yeah i i we found you know uh paul gave us kind of that example when he went to athens where he he looked at all the gods that were around there and he says well i want to talk to you about this unknown god that yes, you talk about yeah. You know, and he just basically shared about that. Mm -hmm. And in one of the ways that I've always shared with Hindus and Jains that are there and Buddha and in Islam is, is, um, I, that's what I would do. I would just ask them, what do they believe? I always ask their questions and then I just want to hear from them. I want to mm -hmm. hear what they have to say. And then I just bridge it with what I believe in. And, and so, um, so the way that I feel or what I've always learned is that the truth will always trump what they say. Yeah. It will always, it would always prevail. Mm -hmm. And so when, when they're sharing what they believe, <clears throat> I always go in, um, when I'm sharing with people that I know that they're very religious, I always act like I'm, I don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's just my approach. Yeah. That's, so that's I go, pretty good. I go like I'm dumb. And so when I'm shy, I'm like, oh yeah, please share with me. What do you believe about this? What do you believe about this? And so then they would share that with me and then I will then take that and then I will share with them what the Bible says. And, um, and I've learned that they were like, well, yeah, that makes sense. And then I would just then slowly lead them down the path to ultimately one, one moment I will ask them, would you like to give your life to the Lord? Or would you like to know more about this Jesus wow. and, and so forth? And so it's, it's, it's open doors and it's very non-threatening. Like you were saying, I'm yeah. not there to, I, I never am thinking about bashing their religion. I can learn from it. I, I like Islam. We just talked about they, Islam last week. Uh, I learned from stuff from them. Yeah, go ahead. Every religion have a good thing. Oh, absolutely. I have very good friends of mine. They are <clears throat> Hindu swamijis. They are Hindu priests. Yeah. I don't have any problem mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. I go sit with them. I eat with them. I have good relationship with them. And I love people. See, God says that you need to love your neighbors. Amen. It doesn't mean God never said in his Bible, in his word, like curse people or <laughs> talk bad about them. No. Yeah. Show your God's love. Let people tempt yeah. to be known to this love. Man. Yeah. You, you know what struck me about your story, Pastor Emmanuel? Yeah. You, you went to the village one time and you, uh -huh. and you served them. Uh -huh. You went a second time and you served them. Yeah. You went a third time and you served them. Yeah. And it opened up an opportunity for you to share yes. who Jesus was. Yeah. But that's, I mean... What a, well, what a message. There's comes. a message. That's where wisdom comes. Yeah, that's so... Sometimes as I go for the cruises <clears throat> right away and get beaten up. But see, this village never, never ever pastors came back to life. But I'm the first person as if I'm going to my house. I go there and come. I went three times now. Amen. We were talking um, before the show, and uh, you were kind of sharing some words of wisdom for, for Americans. And man, you just come from a, a different culture than ours, but you were just sharing some things with Pete and I. I was wondering if you could maybe share that with our audience as well. Yes, um, that's a very important question, and thank you for asking me that. You know, for me, I'm, I mean, like, nowhere, no matter where I go, no place where I go, without God's permission, I will not. Mm. whether it is painful i tell you you might ask why why i've been faced situation in myanmar yeah. i tell you god told me before i go you're going to be beaten up in myanmar mm. i told the same thing to my parents i said i may not come back to india alive god told me that you're going to go there you're going to be beaten up come on who is ready to do that mm. and i'm not i try to convince god I'm not that big holy person. I tell you, I tried to convince God, Lord, please, if it is a will, please let this cup go yeah. away from me. Amen. I did that. I don't feel shame to do that. I fasted for that. I did that stuff. God said, no, you need to go. So I have to agree with him. I'm here right now. Well, in the same way, I got an invitation from people to come to States and preach in the churches. I said, like, it's the news, Lord. What is the word they want that I want to give to Church of America? So I've been telling everywhere, I don't know whether they invite me back or not, but my work is to tell what Jesus wants me to do. So God was very clearly telling me to tell you that he wants America back to keep God first again. Yeah. I mean, I saw a dollar bill sometime and I saw this word called in God we trust and my question to everybody who is watching this do you really mean it wow. 
do you really mean man trusting god is nothing is is not something that you write that coats and car or you wear those t-shirts and mm. you keeping on no trusting god is something that keeping god first in everything amen america was a blessing nation i tell you it was the reason for the gospel to be reached to the dark corners like asia and africa but why god is sending missionaries and you know prophets apostles from those countries to us don't you think where where the american nation is going on yeah america is a place of revival but everything is going down you know why human knowledge human wisdom mm. i know everything i can do everything i had everything mm. replacing god's position now yeah you think it is easy i tell you my friends days going to change days are coming to change it's not still time to sit and read about life stories of paul and peter no it's time for us to stand up and get revival ourselves and get intimacy with the lord and be prepared for his coming amen we are not even in the last days we were got fed up here we are in the last days no we are in the last part of a second before we meet him hmm. see every prophecies that is coming that have come before second coming of jesus have been happening around the world world every every nation is getting to fight on each other world war 2 or 3 is going to come very soon yeah Hope are man. you being prepared to face him <laughs> we are busy man you know what you know nowadays the the you know what is the first place in your life a cell phone mm. are you giving even a tight time that you use cell phone to god and you, you easily come to church and you say my trust is in you god my hope is in you. and are you really mean what you're singing yeah wow do you really mean it one word god of kepes he wants you to be back him first mm. you will never lose the reward because you are the reason people like me got saved nations like me were blessed and god's want to reward you that but he wants you to be back to keep him fast that is a specific word that god wants me to share about church of america yeah so good yeah <clears throat> i think that it is um it has been on our hearts as well and i think Amen. if you know from riot podcast i think that's been our our heart is is really that intimacy with the lord and really Amen. just loving and surrendering ourselves to him Amen. you know it, it as we close out today um you know it, we're as a follower of christ and if, as a as a committed i should say a committed follower of christ we must be we must understand that there's going to be a time of persecution Amen. you know this show gets a lot of hate we've talked about this you know many times where people would come at us pretty hard um it doesn't we're not going to shy away from it we're going to continue to be bold in our faith and you know i james 1 2 through 4 says consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and and from that perseverance we also uh learn long suffering but in all of that one thing that i know for certain is god is faithful amen and god is true and um we can have boldness and i just pray as as pastor emmanuel was just sharing with us that if we're listening to this today that we would we would hear to that and and understand that god is asking us and calling us to our knees to repentance and he's asking us to just uh, surrender every bit of ourselves to him and he's wanting us to just worship him and uh and God wants to take care of you but more than anything else he, he wants to he wants to restore your 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 marriages and your lives he wants to bring hope to your life he wants to give you purpose he wants to give you vision and direction and he wants to bless you and that's that's God's ultimate desire is he wants to take care of his children and uh and so if we've been fighting him or kicking against the goads I, i think god is telling you today he says you know what it's it's time to stop that it's time to stop rebelling it's time to stop uh going our way and it's time to just say god i'm i'm yours i want to surrender my life to you and uh if you're listening to this and and you've never given your life to jesus you can right now and right now you can just humble your heart and and if you heard pastor emmanuel's testimony and you heard uh you know what he's been through for the gospel 
and, and you look at your own life and you say, well, I haven't even done any of that. Well, you can, you can start your testimony right now. Okay. You can, you can humble yourself and your, in your heart, wherever you're at, wherever you're listening to this. And you can just say, God, forgive me of my sins. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I repent of the way that I've done it for so long. I repent of, of, of everything that I've done. And Lord, today I want to, I want to accept you into my heart. I want to believe upon your name. I want to believe upon you, Jesus. I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. And I want to choose to follow you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. and, and you can say that in your heart. And, and, and the Bible says that all the angels in heaven rejoice mm -hmm. for those that repent of their sins. And, and then the Bible says after that, that we are to go tell somebody. You know, the Bible says, if you deny me before men, I will too deny you before my father in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I too will confess you before my father in heaven. And if God is spoken to you and he's shared with you this truth and you've given your life to him, go tell somebody about it. Go share that truth with somebody. Go tell your parents, go tell your friends, go tell your neighbors, go tell the person at the grocery store, tell them how Jesus has touched you and changed your life. Because he is a good, good father Amen. and he loves you. And so, uh, Bob, what an awesome show today and, and uh, just what a great testimony oh. and, and uh, you know, talk to us. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm humbled by the stories and it, it challenges me to be more bold in my faith. In fact, it, it, it reminded me of, of this verse that I love in 2 Timothy uh, 1, seven. It says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but a power, love, and mm -hmm. self-control. We have the power to do that. And it's just hearing your stories, Pastor, is just, uh, it's just humbling. And I, and I hope our listeners can kind of grasp a little bit about that. Stop being afraid of what somebody might say about you. We, we have Christians around the world that are sharing their faith in, in the face of uh, being lit on fire or being beat to de beaten to death. So, um, man, what a powerful show. Thank you for joining us today. Guys, if, uh, if you have questions for Pastor Emmanuel or you would like to maybe help and support his ministry, reach out to us on our Facebook page. You can just go to the comments there, or you can also go to our website, uh, riotpodcast.co.co. And uh, man, as always, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell, and uh, that way you'll be notified every time a new podcast is released. But Pastor, it's been an honor having you on the show today. Amen. Do you have any final words that you'd like to, to leave our listeners with? Well, uh, I really praise God for this opportunity. And I want Amen. to everybody who are watching this, come back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. He is the safest place in the end, critical situation like this. He can protect you. He can heal you. He can deliver you. He can restore the things that you lost. May God bless you. Jesus yeah. loves you. Amen. 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 Have an everybody. amazing week, guys. Thank Amen. you. Amen. God bless you. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.